All right, in this example, we're going to look at cycles. Remember that cycles start and end at the same state. And so here we have some cycle, which consists of multiple processes. The first process, going from state 1 to state 2, is compression. We're told that the compression follows a relationship in which the pressure times the volume is a constant. Remember, this is a type of polytropic process. In general, a polytropic process is PV to the N equals a constant. In this case, N equals 1. And when n equals 1, for an ideal gas anyway, this tells us that we have a constant temperature. We're told that the pressure at state 1 is 1 bar, the volume at state 1 is 1 1.6 meters cubed, and the volume at state 2 is 0.2 meters cubed. Finally, we're told that the change in internal energy from state 2 to state 1 is 0, which makes sense because this is a constant temperature process. Looking at the process from state 2 to state 3, we're told that we have a constant pressure process. Constant pressure. And we're also told that volume 3 is equal to volume 1. Finally, we have a process that goes from state 3 to state 1, which occurs at constant volume. And we're told that the change in internal energy of our system from state 3 going to state 1 is equal to minus 3549 kilojoules. What we'd like to find out is whether or not this is a power or a refrigeration heat pump cycle. Remember that for a power cycle, the net work is going to be positive. We're going to get work out of this device. By comparison, a refrigeration or heat pump cycle is going to have a negative net work. In other words, we had to put work in. We're also going to try and find out what the performance of our device is. To start solving this, we always need to start by defining our system. So we add some system with a boundary. Inside our system is this cyclic machinery, some sort of a piston cylinder device. We want to label our interactions. We have heat going in and work going out. These are the assumed directions. A great place to start is to combine all of our information into a table. And so here we have a pressure and volume table, where at state 1, remember, we had 1 bar, 1.6 meters cubed. At state 2, we know that the volume is 0.2 meters cubed. And at state 3, the volume is back to 1.6 meters cubed. But we don't know the pressure at state 2 or state 3. We can use the polytropic relation on state 2 since we're told that the process from state 1 to state 2 follows the relationship PV is a constant. So that tells us that P1V1 is equal to P2V2. We can rearrange this and find that P2 is equal to P1 times V1 over V2. We sub in our given numbers. We have 1 bar times 1.6 meters cubed divided by 0.2 meters cubed. We see the meters cubed cancel. and We're left with an answer of 8 bar. It's the pressure at state 2. We're also told that the process from 2 to 3 is a constant pressure process. So that tells us that state 3 is also at 8 bars. Now we have enough information to use that table to draw a cell to PV diagram. These are really useful to help us visualize the entire cycle. So we have a graph of pressure versus volume. We put our first state on there, which is at a large volume, 1.6 meters cubed, and a pressure of 1 bar. We know that state 2 is at 0.2 meters cubed and 8 bars. What's the process look like that connects these two? Well, we know that PV is a constant, and so we can see then that the pressure is going to vary with volume like a curve of 1 over x. And so we draw that in. And we label our states state 1 and state 2. State 3, we're told, is back at the original volume but it, and in a pressure equal to pressure 2. So we draw that, and we know that we had a constant volume and a constant pressure process, and we label state 3. In this problem, we actually have lots of different energy balances we can do. First, we can do energy balance on each of the processes. And so we can write, for example, that the change in energy from state 1 to state 2 is equal to the heat transfer from state 1 to 2 minus the work from 1 to 2, following the sign convention we defined above. Remember that change in energy actually has three components, the change in kinetic, the change in potential, and the change in internal. 
And those are all equal to the interactions that change them. We know the kinetic energy and the potential energy aren't changing because the center of mass of our system is not moving. We can write a similar energy balance to go from state 2 to state 3, which we have the change in energy from 2 to 3 is equal to heat from 2 to 3 minus work from 2 to 3. We can also write an energy balance for the process that goes from state 3 back to state 1. In addition, we can write an energy balance for our cycle that tells us the change in energy over the cycle is equal to the net heat transfer of the cycle minus the net work of the cycle. Because it's a cycle, we know that the change in energy is zero because we end and start at the same state. A convenient way to solve these problems and keep all of our information together is to build a table for our energy balances. So we label some columns, process, change in internal energy, and the heat and the work. We add our processes from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, and from 3 back to state 1. Copying down our energy balances from above, we have the energy balance for each of the three processes from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and back to 3 to 1. And in addition, we have an energy balance for the entire cycle. And so we add our cycle to our table, and we can copy down that energy balance as well, which was the change in energy of the cycle is equal to the heat during the cycle minus the work during the cycle. But once again, we know that the change in energy is zero since we start and end at the same state. Now we can copy down what we know into our table and use these energy balances to fill in the rest. We know that the change in energy from 1 to 2 is 0 kilojoules, and all the rest of our values are unknown at this point. Let's use the energy balances to fill it in. Starting out, we can look at state 1 to 2. Remember that process was a polytropic process with n equal to 1. And so we can solve for the work, knowing that work is the integral from volume 1 to volume 2 of PDV. We sub in our relationship for pressure as a function of volume, and we perform the integral. We arrive at P1V1 times the natural log of V2 over V1. Subbing in our numbers, we have 1 bar times 1.6 meters cubed times the natural log of V2, which was 2 meters cubed, divided by V1, which was 1.6 meters cubed. You see that the units cancel in our natural log, which is good. Those always need to be non-dimensional. And if we punch this into a calculator, we get minus 3.32 bars times meters cubed. That's not a very standard unit of energy or work, so let's do a conversion here. First, we know that one bar is equal to 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. So now we cancel out a bar, and we cancel out two of our three meter cubed. And so now we're left with an answer in newton meters, which are joules, but we want an answer in kilojoules to be consistent with our table. So we can convert kilojoules, knowing that one kilojoule is a thousand newton meters. We see our newtons cancel and our meters cancel. When we run this out, we find that the work from one to two is minus 332 kilojoules. We can take that value and stick it back into our table. So the work from process one to two is minus 332 kilojoules. We can sub that into the energy balance for process 1 to 2, and we see now that the heat transfer from 1 to 2 is also minus 332 kilojoules. Now let's look at the process from 2 to 3. 2 to 3. Here we know that the pressure is a constant, but the volume changed, so we can once again compute the work using the integral of PdV this time integrating from V2 to V3. But we know that the pressure was constant, so it pulls out of the integral. And so we're left with the integral of P times dV, which is just P times the change in volume. And so we have 8 bars times V3, which we know is 1.6, minus V2, which was 0.2 meters cubed. And we can use the same conversion that we did above, 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared as a bar, and 1 kilojoule, is equal to 1,000 newton meters. And here we find that the work from 2 to 3 is 1120 kilojoules.
So once again, we can copy that into our table. Now for process 2 to 3, we know that the work is 1120 kilojoules. But we don't know delta U or Q. I guess we left one out that we did know. We do know that the change in internal energy from 3 to 1 was minus 3549 kilojoules. If we look at our cycle energy balance, we know that the change in energy over the whole cycle has to equal 0. So if we add along the column, that tells us that the change in internal energy from 2 to 3 also has to be equal to 3549 kilojoules, positive this time. And we can sub that into the energy balance for process 2 to 3. We find that the heat transfer from 2 to 3 was 4669 kilojoules. Finally, we can compute the work from 3 to 1, once again using the integral of PDV. And this is the easiest one because we know the integral of PDV from V3 to V1 is 0 because the volume doesn't change. V3 is equal to V1. And so we have the work from 3 to 1 is equal to 0. Now we stick that back into our table. You can see that we have all of our works. If we use the energy balance for the process from 3 to 1, we know now that the heat from 3 to 1 has to be minus 3549 kilojoules. We can add these up to get the net heat and the net work, and we see we get 788 kilojoules for both, which checks out with our energy balance that says 0 has to equal Q minus W for the cycle, and it worked. So this is a great way that we can double check our result. When we look at this, we can answer the first question, which is, is it a power cycle or a refrigeration heat pump cycle, by seeing that the net work out is positive. And so we got work out of this cycle. That tells us it's a power cycle. The last thing we want to do is we want to evaluate the performance of our cycle. Remember that we use efficiency for a power cycle. We write an eta for that. And it's equal to what we want divided by what it cost us, which is the work out over the heat in. What we want divided by what it cost us. Now you got to be careful here. The work out and the heat in are not the net values for the whole cycle. We've got to look at our table here and find the work out. And we see here we have one positive value of work out, which is 1120 kilojoules. And we have to look for our heat in, which is also going to have a positive value. And it's here, 4669 kilojoules. So those are the values that go into our efficiency. And so our efficiency is 1120 kilojoules, and so work out, divided by 4669 kilojoules, which is the heat in. And we get 0 0.24 for our efficiency. And what that means is that about a quarter of the energy that went into the cycle through heat came back out as a work, and all the rest was wasted. That concludes the example. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day.